Hello, today we were able to interview a sports development officer along with a coach working on their dream team basketball camp at St Mary's. The interview was to gain an understanding of not only how they coach, but how and what measures they must take to ensure the safety of the children, and what legislation and policies they must take in account, and why. Um, as, as, as coach, they're targeted on. In terms of risk assessment, uh, coaches uh, find they have to do um, many just to protect the people they're working with and working for. Um, a couple of websites um, I found uh, say there's five steps to follow when assessing any risk. First one being identifying hazards. Second, deciding who might be harmed and how. Three, evaluating the risks and deciding on precautions. Four, recording your findings and implementing them. Five, reviewing your assessment and update if necessary. Another government website, the legislation uh, website, um, says in terms of work, uh, every employer should make a suitable and sufficient assessment of the risks to health and safety of his employees to which they are exposed whilst at work. However, it does mean that not all uh, risks will be fixed necessarily but as much as reasonably practical should be uh, covered. Also that it doesn't rely solely on the employer but also the employee that um, the health and safety um, risks are um, assessed. Oh yeah, well, we're, we're, we're an independent company, so we'd love to coach all the kids. But health and safety laws dictate that we can only coach a certain amount of kids. Uh, we buy insurance purposes as well. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, they can fix our like, Uh, the duty of care policy, um, teaching staff owe a duty to take reasonable care for the safety and welfare of students, while students who are involved in school activities or are present for the purposes of school activity. The duty is to take such measures as are reasonable in all the circumstances to protect students from risks of harm that reasonably ought to be foreseen. This requires not only protection from known hazards but also protection from harm that could foreseeably arise and against which preventative measures can be taken. Um, the Every Child Matters policy um, it all came about because of the Victoria, Victoria Klimbe um, case. Let's scroll down to it. Page five. Here we go. Um, so a lot of past failings in the future is why every child matters arose. Um, where we are now, are these points here, um, this is obviously the policy has brought about a lot of changes um, and in education purposes uh, the, they've seen their best ever results in all key stages um, and in terms of where they want to get to, um, it's obviously an ongoing process um, which is See ongoing every single day of the of the year to help prevent instances occurring. So. <coughs> oh, five. Oh, five. oh yeah. Um, can you give us a scenario <coughs> where you felt your duty of care may be done? It's, it's always difficult for us, we, we coach a lot of schools, it's always that difficult procedure of when we're done coaching, because you've got you finished session, you've got three kids, two kids hanging around, and it's always difficult to speak, work out when we're done coaching, when they've gone home. It's always hard for us to understand if they've gone home, if they're safe now, from um, our point of view. But. We're talking things like the school is in the morning one, we still say we still have to be in rooms getting changed and stuff. Which is obviously pretty tricky. So we can have the sessions over and if it's going to school, we send them to school and we're meant to be in charge of getting them changed and stuff, which is a bit, a bit of a weird one. And we call it just going to teach. 
They say that, oh, it's got to be up to you. So, and you're told different things by different teachers. Well. Basically, really. So different schools have different teachers. Yeah, every school is different. Okay, so what he mentioned about having a DBS links in with safeguarding of children. Which I'll just get it up here. Um, so this talks about safeguarding and the importance of it um, and having a DBS and everyone, everyone that wants to work with children in a school setting or a coaching setting is required to have a DBS um, because it is against the law for employers to employ someone that is on one of the barred lists. Um, so it's part of a point of keeping children safe and ensuring that they don't come into contact with anyone um, who isn't safe to work with. Um, they must have one of these done, which is obviously why they have such a problem working with the private schools because they cost quite a bit of money to do that for every school that they want to work with. Um, safeguarding children also shows your responsibilities as a coach, um, which is just list, list some things here about protecting children from our treatment and preventing impairment of children's health and things like that. You also find that they're, they're much more strict their health and safety rules as to um, what they what they're getting out of it because we're coaching their kids, taking their money for the school sort of things, what we get out. So it, it's it's more difficult. Um, and of course, we have school tournaments, and that's solely not solely mainly for um, state schools. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of stuff. from that we usually get most of business from our tournaments. So they don't really hear about the sort of tournaments. So they think you come into school, you coach basketball. And they can't see that we're going to do tournaments yeah. and work clubs like that. Um, but like I said before, we, we're getting there. We've got. They've basically given up. Some schools, depending on the numbers, like there's one school where we have a three and four club, and then a separate five, and then a separate six, because it's so popular in yeah. basketball. And we've been that long until we've moved some kids up, like some year fours, year yeah. five, to make up numbers and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but mainly the biggest range of it is year three or four and then the year five and six session. So you yeah. can't have them all like year threes and year sixes together, that's not kind of a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. The difference in size is massive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so obviously health and safety uh, is obviously uh, a key factor. Um, so for example, they split the year groups into two and um, if we actually have a look, um, that a coach needs to have an acceptable level of knowledge. Yeah, not that one. Um, where is it? Um, growth and maturity. So if I actually scan down here, um, any training activity must be related, modified to physical, logical stages of developing, um, and the growth and development. Um, children do not grow at an even rate, and a group of children at the same sex age are likely to be at very different stages so for example if we put three or four years together I've, there'll be obviously massive differences because even in up to one or two up to one year there are very different stages of growth and development um, and I think uh, this, well, this links in with um, basically accidents and incidents that occur uh, serve to highlight the importance of safety procedures and the need to adhere to such procedures at all time to prevent future problems 
and prevention is better than a cure and with careful planning and preparation many potential unsafe situations can be avoided thank you very much thank you